welcome to the Enemy Dillia, and today let's finish off the review series of the A Certain Scientific Accelerator manga series. Basically, we're going to be reviewing both volume 11 and volume 12, ending the series and finishing our interactions with Accelerator and Full Course. Overall, these two volumes were pretty underwhelming and quite hard to finish, because my overall enjoyment of the volumes wasn't that positive. The main issue is simply because throughout these volumes, the way the full course were represented did not signify them as an antagonist. Apart from their use of children in only viewing them as ingredients, making them totally okay with them draining all of the nectar and then dumping the bodies in the trash, everything else about this organization was a joke. Even their skills in combat were subpar at best which does make sense considering they're cooks and not fighters. Nevertheless though, the abilities that they had were lazy and we've seen them before. That sous chef uses water control, which we've seen from Winai plenty of times and she utilizes it a lot better than he does. The main chef of Full Course using wires just reminded me of Kenzaki from season one where she was fighting Kami Jotoma with wires and again, she used them more effectively than he did. So, I mean, there's nothing really new, nothing really exciting and fresh that they offered. It all was just stale. So yeah, overall, Full Course ended their time within the series, leaving a bland and sour aftertaste when all was said and done. They are a group who are basically just high on nectar and twisted in their methods and mindset. Not a lot more to say about them really, just that, you know, they had a backing of a person who was on the board of committee directors. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I mean, they didn't have anything strikingly like amazing. The best part about them, the highlight about Four Course, was the fact that they're okay using children, because that added a darker element and more of an unsettling feeling when reading the volumes. Apart from that, couldn't care less. However, with that being said, one more final nail in the coffin as to why I did not enjoy Full Course as an antagonist is because of Accelerator himself. Now within manga, the story is important, but also when you have visual representations being displayed to us as the reader, but then those visuals are showing just how incredibly bored Accelerator is while he's fighting and interacting with this group, that, for me, negatively impacts my enjoyment as a reader. Why should I personally, as a reader, be enjoying something that the main protagonist of the series I'm reading isn't enjoying himself? Like, if Accelerator is going around going, oh my god, you guys are boring and dumb and silly, you're idiots, then that's how I'm going to feel like, because that's what's being portrayed to me as a reader. So, yeah, I mean, that to me was a bit of a bad choice in writing, I get it, Accelerator wants someone to be more eviler, eviler than him. But when you have that dynamic and it doesn't come true, because they're still trying to make Accelerator the, you know, the badass of the series, then, I mean, we saw it with Dar. Dar had their moments, but they weren't as dark as Accelerator, or they weren't as gruesome as he is, or hardcore as he is. So Dar was just disappointing. We had it with Harumi and Hishigata. They were a bit better, but still, lackluster, and now we have the same with Full Course. Every antagonist that Accelerator has gone through in this series entirely, he's been better than. And there's been nothing really to grab our attention and make us remember or even want to remember or care about the antagonists. So that's the final nail in the coffin as to why I could not enjoy these volumes or Full Course. Now, let's move on to something a bit more positive though, shall we? I always like to end on a positive note. So we got all the negative and rants out of the way, let's go to positivity. So throughout this volume, we do see Accelerator's development stages playing out with him having the chance to try and change his evil ways. I thought this was handled rather decently, as we see a scene with him both seeing Kamijo and Misaka, and he knows that they're heroes. He knows that they're the light and the good influences around them. As well as the fact is, um, there is a chair that's empty, broken and scratched. A chair for him, but he feels like he doesn't deserve it. He can't sit amongst those heroes and those good people because he is bad, he is corrupted in his soul. 
But no, hope is lost as he does make an effort to kind of be viewed in a more positive light. So maybe one day he can sit in that inner circle of heroes with Kami Jotoma and Makoto Misaka. For example, in terms of how he goes about this, he doesn't kill um, Mami, the twin sister, when he had the chance. I mean, obviously he wasn't going to because he went there to save her because Index Friend was, you know, pleading for someone to help. He helped the Frog Doctor with the kids, which basically meant him using his powers and being in a state of total concentration for over an hour. The old accelerator would never think of doing anything like that, but this one did. So that was a huge step in terms of development and showcasing how far he's come to kind of being a bit more giving towards other people. But back to that chair scene. As seeing the chair that was broken, scratched and unused, Accelerator feels unworthy. But then Last Order's arm appears, offering him a ray of hope. After all, if something bad happens and it affects the Mitsuka network, Accelerator will take action. And you better run if you're the cause of it. So Last Order does view Accelerator as a saviour. He views her, or sorry, she views him as a positive influence, a good person. So the fact that she was the one who gave him that hope, that kind of possibility of him joining that circle of heroes with that chair, I thought was absolutely amazing and a great visual representation. Even the ending, where the series is basically showing us Accelerator getting the black wings slowly and also going off the move point, I thought this was a brilliant implementation into the chapter as we end off the series, giving us a bit more of a perspective when it comes to when the story takes place. Because now we know that it comes like sort of the middle of the range of Index 2, so it's good to know that. I do feel sorry for the girl though, because you know, she got destroyed and I like the character, but I guess that's the price you pay when you involve yourself with shady people and you start trash talking Accelerator. I have to admit, that line from Accelerator, just because I've gotten weaker, doesn't make you stronger. That line was awesome. And a great addition to the chapter that helped end it on a very positive and very epic note. I will admit though, as I was reading through the entire volume, uh, the entire series itself, Accelerator does not seem like he's gotten weaker at all. Yes, he now has a time limit because he has to use the device around his neck. But at the same time, his powers have exponentially grown and he's grown smarter in terms of how he can use his powers because he has access to the Mitsuka network. So, I mean, if you can last till his timer runs out, sure. The likelihood of you lasting that long? Not so, not so um, likely. But you get what I mean. Accelerator says he's gotten weaker. But this entire series shows that he's still badass, he's still super duper strong, and one of the best and strongest within Academy City. He probably is still ranked number one, even at this stage of the series. Anyways, those are my thoughts overall for these two volumes, volume 11 and volume 12. They were a bit of a disappointing way to end the series. I'll admit, seeing all the children and the twins and the princess reunited and getting well was a nice, sweet and wholesome way to end off this series. I liked it because it added a bit more comedy and dispelled the darkness that the series brought with it. So that was a plus. Even having Kami Jotoma appearing a couple of times throughout the final volume, seeming like he's living rent free in Accelerator's mind. Somebody better tell Toma, because I'm sure he'll love to live somewhere that's rent free. But nevertheless though, there was one line I do want to bring up. And that's the line where Accelerator drops in and sees all the children hanging and says if he was here, he could save them. But because I'm here, I can't. And again, that plays to Accelerator's mindset and the way that he's feeling, the way that he views himself. But at the same time, it had me questioning. If Toma was in that situation, Toma would not be able to save them because he wouldn't have got past the front door. Let's be honest. Unless Index has some kind of uh, magical barrier that she can put up that deflects bullets but again it wouldn't be Toma doing it on his own it would be him and friends so that's the difference 
accelerator, you did a good job. You even saved the children at the end. So you should start viewing yourself a bit more positively, my buddy. My buddy? I just, yeah, whatever. Anyway, that's my thoughts on this volume, or these two volumes, let's say. Let me know your thoughts on the series overall in the comment section down below. What did you think of Full Course? Do you like them? I don't, but if you do, feel free to let me know why in the comments down below. Like the video if you did, and subscribe if you're new for more index related content on a weekly basis. But until next time, have a great day. Alligator, Madden it. Goodbye.